history was not based on socialism, it was based on individual rights. And that inherent right of property is key. It is among the most important rights that we have, as your first piece of property is your body. It's why the government cannot force us to take vaccines, tell us what to eat and what we should put into our bodies. Property is anything that we rightfully acquire through our liberty and our labor. We receive money and pay for that. We purchase property and that property is ours to defend and to keep and should be out of reach of an overreaching government. So I thank you today for the opportunity to address the folks here in Boston on Bunker Hill Day. And I would reiterate the importance of defending our private property as there is an all new assault on the land in this country. And we have got to stand now or we will lose the republic that we once had. Our forefathers fought for this right and we are now watching it slowly slip away. For more information, and if you would like to join our efforts at the Massachusetts Property Rights Council, massprc.com is our website. Please check it out and sign up for our mailing list and join the battle as this is a battle going on currently in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that is very serious and will profoundly change the face of this state and this country if these, these efforts that do not respect individual property rights are allowed to continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. And is there a website they can visit to research this further? Yes, massprc.com or davecopass.com. Thank you, David. Thank you. So, today on Bunker Hill Day, of course we patriots around New England know that battle, as the pastor said, it was actually fought on Breed's Hill, which was in front of Bunker Hill. Um, it came to be known actually back then though as Bunker Hill Day for whatever reason. Um, it's a symbol of our defiance to tyranny. And of all the flags that the pastor mentioned, the most visually graphic symbol to defiance to tyranny is the Gadsden flag, otherwise known as the rattlesnake, don't tread on me. And Benjamin Franklin, of course, as the pastor mentioned, talked about how, you know, that rattlesnake, he doesn't attack anybody, but if somebody steps on him, then he doesn't give up and he fights. And um, certainly in the past couple of months, uh, since we had uh, the recent event in New England, I don't need to go into that, but there were some very questionable things done with our liberties here in terms of lockdown, in terms of uh, uh, what ha happened here. And so we're very mindful of that. And we are, we are like that rattlesnake and we want to make sure that all of those Fifth Amendment protections are in place for ourselves and our, our prosperity, posterity, excuse me. And uh, someone that's fought for that uh, his entire life that I've known him and my compatriot is Hal Shirtliff. He is the regional director of the John Birch Society. He is also the director of Camp Constitution. If you have children, uh, you want to spend a nice summer week here in New England and learn about our Constitution and see the Patriot pastor speak and myself and uh, Director Shirtliff, please go to campconstitution.net. Al, very good oh, to see you. you. very much. Thank you, Tom. It's a beautiful day. I want to uh, mention that I have ancestors that were at Bunker Hill. And that spirit, although you may not think it, it's still alive in this city of Boston. Um, one of the things that I've been very focused on the last several years is opposing and educating people about this thing called Agenda 21. You can see the banner behind me. Agenda 21 start, was launched in 1992 at the UN. Um, and they had a big conference in Rio de Janeiro in that same year. Uh, people from all over the world, including our president at the time, Bush, signed this gigantic document that said they will implement this uh, Orwellian document, Orwellian worldview upon our country. And uh, two years before that, something called ICLE, the International Council for Local Environmental Initiative, was created at the UN. The city of Boston and about 27 other towns and cities belong to this unconstitutional UN entity that is slowly taking away the freedoms. Most people don't even understand it. Although I can tell you one thing, the last couple of years, thousands, if not millions of more Americans, not only do they understand it, but they're working against it. And Boston looks like a lost cause. You look at the mayor, the people running for office, and the political climate, but I think people still love their freedom. Yes. Whether they call themselves Democrats, Republicans, or unenrolled. And as more, if this becomes more obvious to people, I think we're going to be able to beat this, even in a city like this. I think there are more people who love freedom, 
than uh, people who don't. And I don't care how well entrenched they are, I don't care how many foundations and how many billions of dollars and how many contractors are involved, freedom is going to prevail. Now, um, in a few minutes, we're going to be raising the Gadsden flag. But what motivated me to do this was several years ago, I was uh, coming back from jury duty across the street, uh, which is something that's unique to our nation. And they were host, uh, raising the flag of communist China, a flag that represents tyranny and mass murder. And there were politicians from our city praising this. And they do it every year. And I thought, well, we're going to show them that the freedom, freedom and liberty is still here, and we're going to raise the Gadsden flag. And this flag stands for as a symbol of freedom and opposition to tyranny. So, folks, uh, yeah, let's do it. Are we good? That was it? Let me see. 